The Little Mermaid and the Prince of the Sea In the deepest parts of the ocean, where no human eye could ever see, there existed a world filled with wonders and mysteries. Giant whales swam alongside the happiest dolphins, and fish of every color of the rainbow danced in the water. But deeper still, in the kingdom where the sea's coldest depths met the darkest shadows, the sea people lived in peace with all the creatures of the sea. At the heart of this kingdom was the deep sea castle, home to the king of the seas. He ruled the vast ocean with a gentle but firm hand, alongside his beloved mother and six beautiful daughters. The king loved his daughters dearly, especially the youngest one, a curious and bright-eyed mermaid, known as the Little Mermaid. Her voice was the sweetest in all the seas, and she had an insatiable curiosity about the world above the water. But the king, protective of his daughters, was fearful of the humans who lived on land. Humans are evil, he would warn. They pollute our seas and destroy the life within it. That is why it is forbidden for you to swim to the surface until you are older, until you have earned your crown. The Little Mermaid was not allowed to explore the world of humans, and the warnings of her grandmother only made her more curious. One day, as she gazed at the horizon from her underwater window, the Little Mermaid made up her mind. She wanted to see the world above. She had heard stories from her sisters about the humans, their music, and their grand ships. But those stories were not enough. She wanted to experience it for herself. With her dolphin friend by her side, she devised a plan to sneak out of the kingdom. But first, she needed the help of him, Room, the wise and powerful blue whale who could navigate the deep sea gate. At first, him, Room refused, scared of the king's wrath, but seeing the little mermaid's determination, he relented. Together, they swam to the great gates of the kingdom, and with a mighty push, him Room guided her past the guards and into the world above. As the little mermaid swam upward, she felt a strange excitement. For the first time, she felt the cool breeze against her face and saw the blue skies. But then, she heard it, music, coming from a ship just a little further away. She moved toward it, and there, on the deck of the ship, stood a young man playing a flute. It was a sight unlike anything she had ever seen. It was a ship, a human ship. Her dolphin friend warned her to be cautious, but the little mermaid couldn't resist. The music was too beautiful and the sight of the ship too enticing. She swam closer and closer until she saw the prince of the ship. He was playing his flute so beautifully that she couldn't help but listen. But just as the prince looked up, the little mermaid dove back into the water, unseen. What the prince didn't know was that the storm was coming. The sea witch, watching from her crystal ball, sent violent winds and waves to strike the ship. The ship was thrown into chaos, and the little mermaid watched in horror as it drifted toward the rocks. Without thinking, the little mermaid swam toward the wreckage. She found the prince unconscious in the water and carried him to shore. As the prince slowly regained consciousness, he could hear barking dogs in the distance. Realizing where he was, he jumped back into the water, unaware that the girl who had saved him was the same mermaid he had heard sing. The prince's men arrived on the shore, and he told them of the girl with the beautiful voice. But the little mermaid, heartbroken, swam back to her underwater home. When she returned, her father, the king, saw the flute in her hand and immediately realized she had gone above the sea. Enough! Humans bring nothing but evil, the king shouted. You must never go to the surface again. But the little mermaid could not forget the prince. She had to see him again. So, she went to the sea witch, asking for help. The sea witch agreed to grant her wish to become human. But there was a price to pay. The little mermaid would have to give up her voice in exchange for two human legs. She agreed, desperate to see the prince again. With the potion in hand, the little mermaid drank it, and as she swam to the surface, her tail disappeared, replaced by two legs. The dolphin helped her onto the shore, where she caught the eye of the prince, who remembered the melody from her voice. However, the prince was confused. He remembered the mermaid's voice, but this girl didn't speak. I thought you were a mermaid, the prince said, but you have no voice. The prince was kind, but still unsure, so he took her to his castle. 
There, preparations for his wedding were underway, but the Little Mermaid could only watch as he was set to marry someone else. She knew that by the fourth sunrise, if the prince didn't fall in love with her, she would return to the sea and forget him forever. On the final day, as the prince was about to marry the princess, something unexpected happened. Her sisters, along with her father, the king, appeared. They had come to undo the curse of the sea witch. With the help of her grandmother, they freed the little mermaid's voice from a seashell. The prince heard her beautiful voice and realized who she truly was. He rushed to her side and, without hesitation, he dove into the sea. He knew in his heart that the girl with the voice was the same one who had saved him. In that moment, the Little Mermaid and the Prince were reunited. Her family's love and support had freed her from the curse, and she was no longer a mermaid, but a human. Together, the Little Mermaid and the Prince lived happily ever after, spreading love, peace, and friendship throughout both the land and the sea. And so, the Little Mermaid's dream of love and freedom came true, not by magic, but by the power of her heart.